This is the dark and twisted history of Bimini's most infamous wreck, the SS Sapona. And I'm gonna give you the reasons why I believe it should be on every scuba diver's bucket list. Roll intro. The Sapona. Here we go. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. What is going on? My name is James. It is so great to see all of your smiling faces. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. We are coming to you this week from the scuba diver paradise of Bimini in the Bahamas. We've been out here making a whole series of videos. I hope you've been watching them and enjoying them. And today I wanted to feature a shipwreck video because every time we come to a beautiful dive destination, I like to pick one site that I think is the can't miss. If you're gonna to come to this part of the world, you have to dive this site and for Bimini for me that is the SS Sapona if you're new to this channel welcome uh, if you haven't done so already please make your next dive on that subscribe button click the little bell icon and that way you'll never miss any of our content and you don't want to because we've got so much awesome stuff coming up for this channel so as you guys know I am super picky about the dive operators I choose to go out with and here in Bimini, my operator of choice is Bimini Undersea, and I want to thank them very much for their service. This is not in any way a sponsored video. We are not uh, being paid to big up Bimini Undersea in any way, shape or form. They are just the operator of choice, and I have a very good friendship with Pablo, who is the uh, the main guy at Bimini. He keeps all the cogs working and, uh, and uh, the engine running here. So this might be the shallowest wreck I've ever dived. And you know that I love my deep tech dives and my deep wreck dives back home in South Florida. So why would I be saying that a wreck where you're lucky if you hit 20 feet on this wreck is the iconic bucket list can't miss dive for Bimini? Well, it's not so much to do with the quality of the wreck dive itself, although it is stunningly pretty, especially when you get inside and you see the sunlight rays coming through. It's more about the sordid history of the vessel itself. Now, for me, I love the history of wrecks. That's, that's what makes wreck diving so exciting for me. It's not just about seeing a pile of rusty metal. It's about the history and the people that were involved in the boat uh, or wreck or whatever it may be while she was active and then getting to see a part of that history in terms of it being a sunken museum. And the SS Sapona has a crazy history full of twisted nefarious characters like something straight out of a James Lee Burke novel. I'm gonna to attempt to do it justice now. The SS Sapona was commissioned by Woodrow Wilson in 1914 as part of the emergency fleet program. She was one of 12 sister ships to be built at the Liberty Shipyard in Wilmington, North Carolina. Now, due to a scarcity of steel, she was designed to be built out of a mixture of rebar and poured concrete and was scheduled to provide a bunch of support military functions, including the transit of refugees from war-torn areas during the First World War. The First World War ended in 1918, but the Sapona wasn't to be finished until 1920. So at the end of the war, what do you do with an emergency fleet auxiliary program when there is no war? So the US government, sensing that there was an economic downturn coming, decided to sell off the auxiliary fleet that they'd created for First World War now that the war has ended. So the SS Sapona was demilitarized and sold to the private sector and purchased by none other than Mr. Carl Fisher. 
Now, Carl Fisher was a legendary entrepreneur. Amongst the many, many highlights of his distinguished career, he owned the first car dealership in the United States. He designed and built the Dixie Highway that runs from Michigan to Miami. Uh, he then built the Collins Avenue Bridge at the end of the Dixie Highway that takes people out to South Beach, and he founded the resort city of South Beach. He's also the same Carl Fisher who gives his name to Fisher Island, a property that he once owned, which still to this day has the highest per capita income income of any neighborhood in the United States. Yeah, that Carl Fisher. The dude was a prolific developer, but he loses points as an uh, anti-environmentalist because he ripped up hundreds of miles of protective mangrove forests along the Florida coastline. So if the hurricanes get stronger, we don't have that protective barrier, blame Carl Fisher. For a brief time, Fisher turned the Sapona into a floating casino, and he had plans of permanently mooring her up down in the Florida Keys and creating some kind of a private club. However, that idea was never realized. The Great Depression hit and it hit Fisher incredibly hard. He was forced to sell off all of his assets, the SS Sapona being one of them. And the buyer that he found the ship was even crazier than he was when it came to nefarious plans. He sold the ship to a British war captain called Bruce Bethel. This guy was one-armed, apparently a little bit of a lunatic, and he had all kinds of dirty deeds planned for the SS Sapona. Starting with stripping her out and selling off her parts, to running some kind of a bordello, the details on that are pretty sketchy from what I could find online, to running her as a nightclub, as an illicit gambling hall, and then during Prohibition, using her to store his stash of rum that he was bringing into the United States, all the while basing himself out of the islands of Bimini. So Captain Bethel used the SS Sapona as kind of like a hiding stash spot for his rum running activities, and it actually earned him the nickname of the Rum King of South Florida. That kind of proves that piracy was alive and kicking well into the late 1920s here in the Bahamas. He sounds like the kind of guy I could definitely have a cocktail with. But alas, Bethel never got to realize his dreams of turning the SS Sapona into a legitimate nightclub, because in 1926, while running from an encroaching hurricane, the SS Sapona ran aground on the reef behind me where she currently sits. Now, for most shipwrecks, the sinking or the grounding of the ship is the end of the story. But of course, this being the SS Sapona, that is not the case. During World War II, the SS Sapona suffered the indignity of being used for range practice by both the aircraft of the US Army and the US Navy. There is no sadder fate for a ship than to be used to drop bombs on for nothing other than practice. So that is what caused the bombed out uh, state that you see behind me with huge chunks of concrete scattering the sand around the wreck as it is now. And apparently if you bring a metal detector out here underwater, you can still find brass fragments from the ammunition. But perhaps the Sapona would have her revenge. The last aerial mission to come out here and practice bombing the Sapona in 1945 was Flight 19, which famously and legendarily uh, disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle on her way to deliver her payload at the site of the SS Sapona. So maybe she just got the last laugh. Graffitied and rusting, the SS Sapona lies where she first crashed into the reef in 1926 and is now an epic sight that cannot be missed by both scuba divers and snorkelers. For me, I'm a massive fan of Prohibition era history. I think it's, it's a, a tremendously fascinating time in America's history. Um, very interesting social studies and all that good jazz. And to have these captains of industry, both somebody very dynamic like Carl Fisher and someone very uh, scoundrelly and piratish as Captain Bruce Bethel, both associated with the same vessel during that period of time. For me, that's fascinating and really, really interesting. As a dive, as a 20 foot, 15 foot dive, she is absolutely gorgeous. If you are into photography and videography, you must make this uh, a dive that goes on your bucket list because the way that the sunlight comes through the art artillery holes that have been made in both her, her deck and her hull, uh, you get these shards of light that come down and pierce into the water column. Then you've got good, strong coral life, particularly inside and on the propellers. And it's just a really beautiful photogenic dive site. And because she's so shallow and we're in such a sunny place, you've got that fantastic opportunity for photos and video. 
If you're interested to dive with Bimini Undersea, and I don't know why you wouldn't be, I will link to their website in the description of this video below. And I also want to say thank you very much to Carl Trace for being our drone pilot and providing such epic drone shots for us. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel on spearfishing and free diving. I will link Carl's uh, YouTube channel in the description of this video below. Go over there, show him some love, throw him a subscribe if you will, please. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already. Really appreciate you watching this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed diving the wreck. Uh, truly a special place to come out. Just over here, I'll put a playlist with all of our other Bahamas videos. And just below that, I'll put a playlist with all of our dive site recommendations. So you can check those out as well. Until next time, my name is James. Thank you so much for watching. This was your Divers Ready video for this week. Dive safe, dive often.